halfway through the first day and got the lower corner up almost. We got a couple more courses to go. day so it gives me a chance to get ahead and catch up with Toby. We have uh, eight more cubes of block being delivered tomorrow. He's almost done four and we've made really good progress but to do this wall over here we've got three courses higher to go uh, so rather than build bring in scaffolding I'm going ahead and backfilling here lightly against the wall. It's a fresh wall so I'm not putting too much pressure on it and we're gonna put the drain pipe in and the gravel. That will give him a, a surface to work on so he can reach that top course. Top course is we got three more to go up to here. And this is perforated drain pipe. It's an interior drain pipe that is kind of just a backup. If everything is done right on the outside, we shouldn't have any water in this crawl space. But things happen. There is a lot of water coming down this hill. And I couldn't say that water would never get in here. So this is a backup system. The perforated drain pipe is just set in gravel bed. We don't have it in filter fabric. I'm not worried about the debris getting into it or any other fine particles. It's gonna sit in the gravel. It goes into a T here, which elbows down. Here, uh, this T will be installed and that will tie into the perimeter drain on the outside, which will go out to daylight. There'll be two, there'll be one on the far side here. So today I'm just getting this gravel in and smoothed out so Toby can work and finish out the, the block wall on this end. The way we're building this block wall, it's an eight inch block wall, and it is at this point 48 inches high. Over on the, where after the footer steps down, it's 72 inches, and we have one area where it's 78 inches. Or where this is being built, there is no requirement for vertical support. Uh, it's because of the seismic zone, typically, is why they would require vertical support. Uh, where we live, that's not required. The other potential requirement for vertical support would be if there's unbalanced fill, and that's if there's more than 48 inches. For an eight inch block wall, I think it's 48 inches of fill on one side higher than the other. So that would cause this to act like a, more of a retaining wall. We're close to it. We should have about 40 inches on the outside, but I know that there might be a lot of pressure on this wall, being that it's downhill, a lot of potentially hydrostatic pressure, building against this wall. Uh, when it is required, you have to put this rebar and tie it into the footer. And typically that has to be done before you pour the concrete because that rebar, this has to come down and kind of hook to or bond to the horizontal rebar in the footer. They didn't do that here. Uh, not only is it just more complicated, we had lots of corners. I was lacking the form work to really pull our measurements off of and, and working against time. So if I, didn't lay it out just right, it'd be cut off and redone like we're doing now anyway. And ideally that rebar comes up in the cell of a block. So this uh, rebar would be coming up in the middle of that cell. And if it's a shorter piece on a tall wall, so if you have a tall wall like over there where it's 72 inches and you don't want a 72 inch piece of rebar sticking up that you've got to lift the block up and over. On a wall where it's actually required, you may not have to run it all the way up, but they want it to come up at least 14 inches. So you could follow that requirement and run up 14 inches. But to take it all the way up, up the wall, you just put the next piece in and overlap it. And if it comes up where the webbing is, 
then the mason just has to, you know, bend the rebar if it's close or knock out that webbing. And we don't want to do that. Uh, so what Toby likes to do in this situation is lay that first course of block and drill in and then do everything once that block is there. If I can stay ahead of him like it was earlier and I know where the block's laying out, I can go every 48 inches and that will hit the middle of the cell uh, as long as the wall is laid out so I can stay ahead of them and we can put it in. So either we're putting in after the first course or just prior to once we know how that block is laid out. That is, we're drilling it into the footer. It'd be good to go in about six inches with a 5 8 bit and masonry bit using a hammer drill and you blow the dust out and then you can use an epoxy and put that rebar in. We have the vertical reinforcement that's put through the cells. They're filled solid as you go. And I've seen some people fill solid and I don't believe that filling them solid without the rebar is gonna do a lot. I think then it's all just masonry and you're still gonna have the same potential amount of cracking or shifting or movement or if there's any settling, it's still gonna be a fairly weak place. Whereas if you have the steel reinforcement in there, it's gonna help bond and hold everything together. The other thing we're putting in the wall is Durawall. This is horizontal support. This webbing goes in every two courses in between the block. So as you go up two courses of block, you lay this webbing down the block goes, you put your mortar on, and the block goes over it. So that gets sandwiched here in the horizontal uh, coursing. Uh, so when this, for instance, goes on, this next course, it's a sandwich in the middle. The rebar is coming up here, so this gets filled solid. So you have horizontal support every other course going in the wall, and you've got vertical support every 48 inches coming up. Again, neither one of these are required. Uh, it's just kind of a best practice in the way I've learned to build and I'm trying to eliminate the amount of cracking that might happen in the block wall. So mom and Jean are here and they haven't, uh, they haven't been here in probably two months uh, since we did the initial clearing and we're going to walk the site with them today, check out progress and just kind of show them more specifically where the house is, the orientation on the land. We got to talk about a few things uh, on site uh, in terms of elevation and grading and we'll meet with them later to finalize some details on the windows. We got to get the window order in and some of the other exterior details that are relevant now to our planning process. We're starting that side and working our way out. And that is um, 
the final elevation, you can see the height. So it's really high. So grading around here will change, but at the same time to, to regrade, we would lose trees. So that's something to talk about. So out here where there's the, everything's piled up, right. um, is getting ready the septic. This is where the drain field will go. Mm -hmm. And so probably from that first pile, down and around that perimeter, those three piles of trees is roughly where the, the drain field will go. Wow. That's so gonna clear out when, he, when he, yeah, he can leave one or two trees selectively, yeah. depending yeah. upon, he yeah. said he can work around them. But over on the other end, so where the grade is more dramatic, um, the rendering show less steps. We are going to bring grade up more, but so on your bedroom end over there, uh -huh. it's going to be graded up to the. We'll bring it up uh, probably three or four feet. Mm -hmm. But at the, so what Sarah and I were talking about, by the time that deck comes out, your deck. yeah. But we're thinking that yeah. the the steps, rather than bring up grade mm -hmm. that far out, turn the steps down this way on that end. Yeah. So they come this way. Sure. Grade here off the screen porch will be less dramatic with less steps down, but off the bedroom. And that leaves you elevated into right. more of the canopy. Well, it's so pretty this time of year with when we bought the property, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was this much. time it last year when we, with, the, with the beautiful canopy yeah. and the, the, the beautiful up in the yeah. That is. Yeah, it's just so amazing. pretty. Remember the, the light coming. Felt like to come in and just clear everything around the property, do all the excavation, get everything out, and you end up with a, a, a desert in this perimeter. Yeah. But we're trying to leave what we can and do it more selectively as we go. But I do, I love the, um, the grassy stuff, the silk grass, that's invasive. That invasive <laughs> you love the invasive grass. silk grass? It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's it, better than regular grass, right? Uh, you don't I mean, you don't have it. to cut it. Uh, it only gets so tall, right? I'm not well, so I don't sure about that. grass but. anyway. So we're going to try to go grassless. Our okay. whole thing will be... I don't need a mower. We want to. Well, you also have the start of a lot of hugel culture mounds. Yes, you got one there. You got one there. You got one there. So that. Um, other, what, so we have to either haul it away, bury it, push it into the woods, chip it up. Yeah, I was thinking of hugel culture and. So at some point. Chipping the small stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so the. You, Exactly. Oh, so. So at this point, you can see right here is your. I saw it on the thing. It's going to be six. This is your top, your center block wall. Uh huh. That's, That's like the, the top right there. Wow. So your so floor joists are up here. I mean, so the, the goal is to have a mechanical space you can stand in. <laughs> yeah. um, you might be able to walk in a lot of the crawl space. Cool. In here, mechanical room, uh, sump basin here, mechanical equipment along here. A sleeve for where the the pump will come in, the, the well water, so the well's over there. Um, get piped over to here for your treatment. That is where the septic line, the drain line will go out to the septic tank. Basically, it's going to be a very dry space and it's all storage. Yeah. Right? So we added a door over here. Yeah. Oh. Because over here you've got the ceiling height again. So the door here is access to this so like garden hoses i picture gardening stuff right yeah. so oh look look it's mom height mom yeah. height yeah it'll, it'll be exactly mom height well if you look over the wall you'll get an idea your bedroom window windows up here, up here, up here chair. looking out oh my gosh and so the bedroom is about the yeah. middle of the trees it's so beautiful
I'm mean, doing now that we have the walls in and we're bringing the drain tile around the inside. I'm running the portable generator again to or run the sump, sump pump that's in the basin to get the water out of here. We had on the inlets covered them with hardware cloth to keep gravel from getting into the basin. Now I need to expose that, take off the hardware cloth to connect our drain pipe. I'm gonna connect the drain pipe from this end. Over on this wall, the drain pipe is above the footer. On the high walls, it is next to the footer, which is where the water might actually come in. So the lower that drain pipe is, the better. Uh, so we kept that next to the footer. Uh, what I do wanna do is turn that pipe into the gravel bed here and have that pipe as low as possible uh, because this is where all the water will come that does actually potentially get into the foundation will come into here. It'll hit the gravel bed. The, the compacted soil below the gravel bed is pitched that direction. So everything will head this direction, but having the drain pipe lower will help, help ensure that the water is uh, evacuated. Uh, on this wall, the drain pipe is next to the footer. So we'll continue that, bring it down. Once Toby's done with this wall, we'll have to dig, dig this back out to bring the drain pipe in and connect into that side of the basin. Pull up, we're gonna make that not steps. We're gonna meander on down to the front door. Mm -hmm. So front door is 36 wide with two side lights. Perfect, you come straight in, there's gonna be a double uh, French door into your courtyard. Pulling in, yes. Well, with double with double doors like that, you, they can be open. You can get the cross out. breeze if you have Double yeah. French doors as opposed to a slider only mm -hmm. half of mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. is. I like the idea of the. Well, a slider might, you know, be a better. I like having the doors open up. There's something really nice about walking mm -hmm. in, the idea of walking in yeah, the front door and then the doors opening the up. Total open. It's romantic. It's exactly, that's exactly yes. the word I was going to say. There's a and, romantic. And if you look at it, if you actually open them out, you would have a collision here. Yeah. If you actually went with yeah. a five foot wide door, I think you could open it up on against both walls to actually Instead leave it of open the six and foot. out of the flow of traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At that point, a five foot door Yes. Yeah, they take a could open all the way yeah. against the wall. Yeah. If you set it yeah. in. So let's go all right, into going into the kitchen. Kitchen. Okay. We've got a kitchen, uh, a window over the sink. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is, we talk, we. Right now it's in there as a double casement. So I think we, we discussed also having just similar openings across it's... the front of the house, just as a facade. Right. Right. Yeah, let's talk about the front. So okay. let's talk about from here around real quick. Okay. okay. So that's the bedroom window. And we talked about, we, we made that a bigger window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a double slider. That's nice. From the outside. Yeah, so they pull in. Mm -hmm. So you'll have your bed, which uh, is going to be in the middle. Yeah. So on both sides, the bed. So you could hit it from either side. Right. Yeah, yeah. you can hit yeah. it and open it. Um, Back wall is a lot taller.
All right, so what can I do to stay ahead of you? What I'll do is I'll quit right here and I'll start parging because it's taking a while to pour. If you start parging the wall, then we can start working on the waterproofing and get ready for backfill. The inspector, he wants waterproofing in, gravel and drain pipe to do the backfill inspection. So if we can uh, get that parge and we can do that, and then I can backfill next week. Toby has finished the foundation walls. It took him about three weeks, but with the rain and a few other appointments he had, uh, he got it done and it was about two weeks worth of work. One guy, 1300 block, and um, he did a great job. And I'm always impressed with Toby. He comes out, works hard, no complaints, gets the job done. Uh, he does it by himself and it's just so easy to work with. So thank you, Toby. Next, we have to waterproof the foundation walls which includes putting on the, the tar, putting gravel down in the drain pipe. And the county wants to see that before we do backfill. So they'll do a backfill inspection uh, to see those things. So we'll be working on that next on the exterior of the foundation walls. And we should also have the septic system starting uh, very soon.